Hello, I'm Renee, the Practical Shaman. How are you today? Hi, everyone. I'm Sandra Ingerman, and welcome to the Shaman's Cake. <laughs> so we're breaking a pattern. The first pattern we're going to break today is I'm going to tell you what we're going to talk about. Uh, a lot of times, like, I just say, you you start, you tell us, because, you know, you're really good at succinctly weaving these topics into a, a word. Those of you at home, we know you're going to like us on Facebook and hit subscribe and hit the like on this while you start out listening. The Sandra always writes the descriptions and I do the back of the house stuff that really works well for for us and it's probably a pattern we're not going to break because she's great at writing and I'm great at technical and it really melds together and but our show today is about breaking patterns and it's a really important topic and all seriousness aside I was starting to laugh at the beginning because I think learning to laugh was one of the first patterns that I ever broke you know I was glum I was like downer Debbie poor Debbie <laughs> who gets that downer Debbie name and one of the time I just realized that I went to the movie theater it was my first solo experience to the movie theater and I went alone in and I left my misery at the door and the show I went to see was Sister Act. And I laughed hysterically throughout the entire thing. And then right before I left the, the movie theater, I heard this voice. It was one of those clear audience experiences that said, now Renee, are you going to leave your misery behind in the movie theater? Or do you wanna pick it back up at the ticket booth? Mm. And it was like I was looking around to see if Whoopi Goldberg was talking to me, but it was this revelation in that moment of that I could change gears. I could break a pattern and learn that I could give myself a few hours here, a few days here to sulk, but that I, if I really wanted to show up differently in my life that I really needed to shift this pattern. And so that's what our topic is today is tools that we've used to shift and break patterns in actually in, in our relationship on the shaman's cave and in your relationships and in the relationships in the world. Yeah, that's it's such a powerful it's really such a powerful topic. Um, when I when I work with clients uh, with soul retrieval and um, this is kind of a big issue for me right now in that um, because I'm a, um, a licensed psychotherapist, uh, I can really see um, what's needed in bridging um, shamanism into a modern day culture. And so I take soul retrieval very seriously because of the fact that we're breaking a pattern because when we lose a part of our soul, our soul goes away because of something terrible going on in our life. And as our soul stays away, we just keep repeating the same pattern over and over again. And what I teach is that I believe it's our, our unconscious way of trying to find that missing part of our soul we just keep looping the same pattern pattern over and over again and we think we're going to find ourselves in doing that so for me when i teach soul retrieval the most important part is not bringing back the soul and that's what's going on right now is people are teaching one day workshops two day workshops on soul retrieval and uh clients don't realize they're being robbed of the best work because the best work in our culture is what happens after the soul retrieval in finally teaching people how to break the pattern and so that involves um that involves um uh what healthy practices do you need to bring into your life that makes you feel your soul welcome being back home again if you just have a soul retrieval and you go out and and one of the reasons you had a soul retrieval was your pattern is 
what happened from growing up in an alcoholic family and you're an alcoholic so you go for a soul retrieval you go oh great my soul's back and then tomorrow you just go drinking again so i like to teach people uh what do you do uh what's something different that you can do with this energy that was going into um your bad habits that will uh, create healing in your life. Mm -hmm. um, and so I have a, a series of exercises that are all around um, incorporating new changes into your life so that you, you've actually got healed with your soul retrieval. And that's sometimes the work we don't want to look at. We just mm -hmm. want the healing, but we don't want to look at um, the pattern that's been running through our lives and taking the time to do a simple ceremony like a fire ceremony, a wind ceremony, and say, this pattern is done. It's done. It doesn't take a lot of work. It's just the intention, just getting out there and saying it's done. Break a stick. It's done. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I agree with all of that. One of the things that I learned when I was really working one on one with clients a lot was that I would take weeks with them before I would even consider going in to see if there was some soul loss, because I wanted to make sure from my own experience that they were embodied enough to even get that piece of that soul back because I had this particular part of my soul that was brought back many times. And finally, finally, you know, I had a, a teacher who said, you know, maybe this is a part of your soul you don't really want to welcome back. Maybe it's a part of your soul that you should go to the river and have a consecration exercise with and say, okay, you know, you, you were a part of my soul that didn't really, what wasn't such a great coping mechanism and we're not sure you're part of the team anymore. And so I had that theory for a, a while. And it turns out it wasn't that it was that the soul part that the, the, the trauma was really intense. And so every time we'd bring back this soul part, my life would turn upside down on his head. You know, I'd go back into those hateful moods and all of these things would happen. And finally, after years or more of doing healing, um, it was actually one of your your teachers who who brought did a, another soul retrieval for me, and we brought this part of my soul back again. And this time, with all of the stuff that you're saying about, like, okay, now that your back is part of the team, you know, how are you going to show up differently? How are you going to show up and actually, you know, be a contributing member? And, and yes, we really appreciate that you have this innate sense to pick out tragic or something from, and those are good skills, but you can't disrupt the rest of the, the operating being here. And it was a bigger integration than I ever had. And the very next day, two clients quit, two coaching clients quit that I had no business working with anymore. And I, I finished Winds of Spirits. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's a great story. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great story about when you finally, um, when you finally settle into yourself and, and you're here and you, you know what your truth is, um, all of a sudden the universe starts cooperating with you. You know, it's like, you found your flow again, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and that's the issue with patterns is patterns are always trying to take us out of our flow, you know, mm -hmm. always trying to sabotage us. It's, you know, we're this is um, we're just this is just a human uh, earth school, and so we're all just learning here. And and learning about patterns and and getting into bad patterns and getting into good patterns is really all part of why we're here. And so we do. We have to fail. Um, we have to fail in order mm -hmm. to learn. We have to. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so it's not about judging yourself for the patterns that are going on. It's, wow, this is a role that I've taken on in, in my life. And, and what, has it, what has it done for me? And does it work for me anymore? That, that's really the big question is, is it working for me anymore? Is it making me happy? And if it's not, then uh, finding simple ceremonies that you can do where you just set the intention that I am saying goodbye to you as an old friend. I loved you. We had fun together, but it's no longer a healthy relationship. And so it's time to move on. And mm -hmm. so that's how you want to talk to your patterns. Mm -hmm. And if you set a strong enough intention with it, as um, Neville says, uh, the, t the teacher I work with around creation and manifestation, he says, you close the door on that old pattern and you now stepped into a new room and you can occupy the space of a healthy pattern. Um, mm, I like that. Yeah. And, and sometimes we need reminders. Um, one of the things was after that session we did, a, I wrote an affirmation mm. and became hyper vigilant about seeing when the old pattern crept in. Like, so it was so clear because really two clients left the very next day. It was like, it was, it was like magical. And, and, and not to get, I'd go like, oh my God, well, how am I going to, how am I going to pay the rent? And then I'd go read this affirmation, you are whole and complete exactly as you are, or whatever it was. And then they're like, oh, okay. Or that you've always been taken care of. And, and that's a big one for me is like, you know, when you get into this crazy pattern of, oh my God, I'm going to go down the tubes and I'm not going to pay the rent. And I, you know, then I, I say to myself, like, hmm, has that ever been true? Right. When's the last time you didn't have enough money to pay the rent? And I, and I, I go back to never, right. You know, because the one time I pinched nerve in my neck and I didn't probably have enough money almost to pay the mortgage. All of a sudden somebody walked into my center and said, Oh, is that bear for sale on the wall? And I sold a painting for the $800 I needed to pay the rent. And so, I mean, it's, it's like in, in AA, they call it um, false evidence appearing real is fear. Mm -hmm. and, and so we have to, in order to change a pattern, you have to first say, is this true? Right. Is this even true? Oh, no, it's not true. Then why am I putting energy towards it? Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and for those of you who know how to journey, um, the most powerful journey that you can ever take is um, asking your spirits to show you um, the, what you heard or, or what the pattern that you, um, the pattern that you took up as a really, um, before um, like pre-verbal, go back and what was the pattern that started from uh, being pre-verbal? So just to give you an example, I was so shocked the first time I ever led a fire ceremony in, um, in 1990, uh, where I was asking the group to journey on a pattern that started um, from something they heard, something unconscious that came, that, that came into them uh, pre-verbal and um, to ask their spirits to show them that and then to make a talisman to bring it to the fire. And I participate in all my fire ceremonies with people and as I did the journey and my power animal said, you have never felt welcomed here. You have never mm -hmm. felt welcomed here. My whole entire life has been about making people feel welcome. Mm -hmm. I go, I go so out of my way. It's crazy the the things I do to make people feel comfortable and to make people feel welcome. And it was just because 
it was I didn't feel welcomed here. So it's really important. I, I'm, I was very happy that I've been able to make people feel welcome. <laughs> life, but I, I would like to feel welcomed here too. And so that was a pattern that I really had to break for myself. No. Um, it didn't mean I had to change my behavior of being loving towards people who came to my workshops, came to my home, but I had to be, I had to be conscious of why I was doing certain things mm. and it changed things for me. So if you know how to journey, um, ask your spirits to actually show you the pattern that got started at a pre-verbal age and you will be shocked. And, and, like and, that one in awe uh, actually yeah why don't everyone do that and then you could tell if you're a journeyer and then tell us what if you if you're you know brazen to share what it was i had that same experience but that journey came up for me when i was doing medicine work in mexico and i was shown in this vision that i had had not i was not a welcome to like I was a disruption to the community. Can you just imagine, you know, here's this working class family and Sandra, here we come, you know, these, <laughs> these rebels, these shamans and, you know, in, into these home environments where they weren't equipped for people who were as creative or as far out or as imaginative. And so I had that journey where I had to go back in this space and in the journey that I went on, I, there was this whole journey where I was welcomed into a new community. Mm. Yeah, it was like a redo. And, you know, and I was welcomed there. And, and I knew that the shaman was tracking with me because it was like, from the time of my birth, I didn't feel welcome. I wasn't wanted. I all of these things. And it was like, wow, imagine the world without me, you know, like, not in a big way, but like, you know, it, it that I was an important contribution to this time and space. And so if you don't feel welcome, you know, go back and you can rewrite that script. Yeah, because it's really important to understand that everybody who was born was born with an energy signature. And this energy signature was very important to the web of, of life. You mm -hmm. had a real reason. You had a, a, a real place in the web of life. And, and that has to do with your energy signature. And most of our energy signatures are covered up because we get lost in bad patterns in trying to protect ourselves, trying to be loved, um, trying to find a way to fit in. And so we lose our own energetic signatures, which is... Um, the signature of our creativity, what we came in here mm -hmm. for. And I can't imagine a world without Renee and her, her <laughs> signature. And, and so, so we want to blossom and we want to show our brilliance, but we have to break the bad patterns, the stuck patterns, mm -hmm. that keep us from just willing be, to be willing to show up and say, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and this is me. Um, and that's how you grow. I mean, there's been several times, like we've been doing this for five years and mostly Sandra and I get along famously, like, you know, like we are two peas in a pod getting along so great. And we've had like a couple of times when, when there's been things and each time I've had to go back and say, okay, what do I need to change in me? You know, that, that you know that there's a two sides of a trigger what do i need to change in me and what is this triggering which is mine and which isn't mine and navigating that space with another person consciously is a game changer mm -hmm. because look at we're in year five and we're almost to year six and we still love each other and we still enjoy each other and and most of all we still laugh right <laughs> absolutely <laughs> And so think about in your own life, like when those patterns come up, like, do you run, do you retreat, or do you look at yourself really good in the mirror and say, hmm, I have to look here and shine that light inward and look and see and say, oh, 
Sometimes like there'll be something that one time I did a ceremony and Sandra could feel all the frenetic energy, but at the time I didn't, or I was too much in it. And it was like a year later when, or two years later, I don't know, however long it was, I was doing it. And they're like, oh, this feels way more contained. I understand what it was. So it's not always in the minute. So sometimes we want to respond out when it's better to like respond in and see like, okay, what about me could grow here? I love that. Yeah, I really love that. And that's what it's all about is um, once you get that, you love yourself and and we can do that as another show. Um, But once you get that, that you really need to love yourself in order to create anything good for yourself. Um, uh, all of a sudden, everything changes. Mm-hmm. Everything changes. Mm-hmm. And, and so if you're willing to look at what's triggering you, if, if you're willing to uh, have a, a conversation about what's triggering you with somebody else and, and bring awareness into it, um, everything that we bring awareness into, everything it goes back to physics. If you look at something, the nature of it is going to change. <laughs> well, I think that we've said a lot on it. And again, we love when you share your insights and how if you find this valuable or other questions, other topics, you know, we do repeat ourselves, but a lot of people don't go back to listen. Like we did a show on what there was something you brought up today. We did a show on that. So if you search back into the archives, you'll see a show on the, your energy footprint. Right. Yeah. Energy signature. Yeah. Right. And I mean, that was an important topic. So don't, if you're not just scroll through and pick a show and I'm sure you're going to get something from it. So there's, there's a, bountiful library of wisdom that we've shared over these years that can keep you inspired for years to come. Absolutely. And we are open to topics. Um, A lot of people, instead of sending us topics or sending us people to interview, this is not an interview show. (laughs) Um, So if you have a topic um, that you would like us to talk about, uh, just uh, send an uh, email to the sh- Shaman's Cave. Um, that's uh, listed um, for you to be able to get to. And I will get that email. And if the topic is relevant, um, Renee and I are happy to speak about it. So. Mm-hmm. And I and I do interview authors um, on my other, I have the, the Practical Shaman podcast, and I tend to interview authors with new books and things like that, or subjects that I find interesting. So, you know, if you do have somebody you think should get interviewed, send it over to me, and um, I will, I will consider it. Great. Yeah. So, um, so life is about learning and life is about growing and what we shared here today is that for our survival we all we all create these patterns that um we think are making us safe but what they're doing is they're um they're pushing our creativity Mm -hmm. our light down and this is not a time to be pushed down this is the time to grow and shine and and actually bring more beauty into the world as what is here is starting to be dismembered. Let's weave more beauty into the world, break those patterns and show show us who you really are. Um, and let's flood this earth with love. Mm. That's a beautiful, I'm seeing some people opening up their super women capes and their supermen capes and like really changing form here. So what a great vision to end with. And we will see you really soon at the Shaman's Cape. Mm-hmm.